want to take a look at their, you know, players here. We do have this fantastic versus screen. We've got Hot Shot sitting up there at the front of the table for CLG, and then V8 on the other side. Everyone's definitely excited, and I, I think it's interesting. Both supports taking clairvoyance. They know that they've got you yeah. know, these aggressive junglers. Uh, they don't want to allow that early invasion or even just you know, counter jungling as the game progresses or ganking influence. So uh, they will be prepared for that. But we are in the game. We should be getting underway shortly and see how CLG versus V8 handle this game. Yeah, definitely. We've been seeing a lot of resurgence in clairvoyance. I think for a while you stopped seeing it. But it's, it's coming back just because, especially this game, they have heavy, heavily positioning uh, dependent champions. So it's, it's very important for both teams to have clairvoyance this game. Is that going to be a weakness bottom, though? Janna doesn't have her heal. Kog'Ma, if they can you know, get any early harass in, they definitely have the out-sustaining comp down in the bottom lane with Soraka. Is the fact that you know, neither Double Lift nor Janna have a heal going to hurt them, or is that really only for when you're kind of dueling and I want to have like that advantage? I feel it shouldn't be a problem just because Kog doesn't have enough damage early. Even with the heal, and if they're going to exchange, uh, Vayne's going to come out. So... Um, and if she chooses not to exchange, the Janus Shield is going to be able to block all the damage. Well, we do have V8 coming in here extremely aggressively, recognizing both junglers are, you know, Manalist junglers going to go for that early red. So V8 going to try and steal this red. Uh, and then at the same time, we see CLG on the opposite side. They've already kind of set up themselves, just like last time, seeing if, you know, maybe they can catch Trieskimo out of position again. Um, maybe coming up from that blue, though, I don't know. Uh, that they expect it, but we'll see whether or not CLG comes in. Do you think that they know V8 is in their jungle right now, in the red, and are trying to kind of flank them on their way back? I feel like uh, they're, they're trying to counter blue, so that's why they're hiding up there. What they want to do is they want to have V8 start the wolves, then go to blue, but that's not happening. So is this going to be them farming each other's jungle and then splitting off the lane? Okay, well, Mundo is going to be able to get that red, and that is going to hurt some of uh, St. Vicious's ganking potential. They are set up here. We'll see whether or not there's a little bit of an engage, but everyone will probably be able to clear back. And let's see who's going to be uh, getting this blue. I'm curious whether or not did we pass off the hot shot or just give the experience to St. most likely. I think oh, my gosh. So we actually have Trieskimo almost engaging with Big Fat there for a second. But um, he's actually, you know, sitting over here. He doesn't see Unstoppable kind of waiting around. They're not positive on where everyone is. He's actually going to walk right into Unstoppable, not going to see him there as he's getting away. But Saint coming up top, going to get off some nice early damage against Trieskimo. He will be able to get out of there with the flash, not taking any damage in that lane. I felt like that flash was a little preemptive. What he wanted to do was have her burn at least exhaust before flashing. Because next time when Shivana comes around, probably within the next minute, he's not going to have it up and she's going to have exhaust and that would be a 70% chance of getting a kill. And so um, I'm, I'm a little worried because he could have baited a summer spell along with his flash. And particularly considering that, you know, Trieskmo is probably going to be pushing up this lane. Um, so it will put him in that vulnerable position as we discussed earlier. So Mundo able to get his red. He is slightly ahead of Shivana currently. Yeah. Uh, what is, you know, Shivana's main goal going to be in this early jungling phase just to, you know, kind of clear along, get some levels? In terms of jungling right now, she really can't invade without red just because her kill potential is going to be so weak. And she can't chase down Mundo. So one thing you're not going to see is you're not going to see Shivana counter jungling on Mundo unless she knows his position on the map. Uh, her concern right now is just basically farming. She's probably going to donate this blue to uh, Ryze if Ryze wants it, but I honestly would like the EXP. Well, we do have Mundo coming up here for this top lane for Hotshot. Hotshot still has his flash, so he should be able to get out of there pretty easily. He's actually just going to Blade Surge, but there it is. Some damage going off. Hotshot getting kind of low in this lane. He does, did start off with the boots, but he is uh, actually going to recall. No, he's just going to sit in lane, and uh, St. Vicious clearing his own blues there, so doing pretty well with the farm there in the jungle. I'm kind of curious. I mean, the, the boots, you know, definitely going to allow him to avoid that early aggression with the ganking, but... Um, do you think he's going to be able to just regen safely against Scion? Scion uh, doesn't have an Ignite, so not a whole lot of kill potential. There's definitely not a lot of kill potential. I feel like once he gets to the tower, she's going to be pretty safe. And she can also pressure Scion, uh, maybe feigning a gank even, and get some pressure off of herself. And really, once she gets a couple of points in, uh, into her heal, she's going to be able to sustain. 
Well, we do have Hotshot coming in on Tree Eskimo, and his flash is down. They did see St. Vicious, but he doesn't have the vision, and actually he's going to teleport out of there, so he's going to get out. But there it is, the stun from Hotshot, and St. Vicious with the exhaust, so he's going to be able to chase him down. There is the first blood, St. Vicious picking it up, and the crowd is just absolutely insane right now. We all know who they're supporting in this match. And that early kill for St. Vicious is going to be huge, just like last game. He's going to be able to get that jungle control, even though he was set back a little bit, losing that red buff. I think Scion would have lived that if he had about another half second, because um, Hotshot did jump into him and use his uh, resonating strike, right, not resonating strike, using his equilibrium strike right away. And so it wouldn't have been up for like another about second, but he did like waste his time running to the brush before teleporting. One thing he should have known is if Shivana was going to gank, she doesn't have a stun either. So if he was going to run that way, he should have just teleported in place. And so far, we've actually seen Aphromoo doing a fantastic job controlling this lane bottom. Uh, the sustain from Soraka allows him to just trade damage very easily. But Trieskimo going to get off a nice little shot against Hotshot, but at the same time, Hotshot's doing fine. You know, there's no Ignite, and then once Hotshot hits level 6, he will have that regen with his ultimate. Um, so Mundo, you know, now because Savannah has that early advantage, actually he's going to be coming in mid. There was the wall from Karthus, so he's going to try and get the cleave, but Big Fat going to flash out of there. What, what do you expect that Mundo is going to be trying to accomplish as a jungler at this point, knowing that Shivana has a, lo a little bit of a lead? Uh, she definitely does have a little bit of lead. Um, in terms of her chasing down Mundo, I don't see it happening until she gets red buff or frozen mallet or at least a fage. So he's relatively safe against her. They're just going to be basically doing their own thing and looking for gank potential. Wow, but we have V8 going for an extremely aggressive dragon. Six minutes in, Aurelia doesn't have that teleport, so Cyan already coming down here. Karthus does have a lot of damage for dragon, and Big Fat's a little bit low on mana. There he goes, throwing off the snare on Takashi there, but he's just going to back off. In the meantime, we have Janna and uh, Doublelift coming down here, trying to take him down, and unstoppable. Actually, we have the flash in from Tree Eskimo. There's the cleanse from Doublelift. Karthus ult will go off, but they're not going to be able to pick up any kills, and Mundo's a little bit low right now, so... They should be able to pick this up, but they... I think they're a little afraid. Because if you look at everybody on CLG, they're actually relatively low. And I guess it's more prudent and safe to do it that way. And I, I guess without you know, the jungler protection there, knowing that Mundo was, was so low, they didn't want to risk him dying and then you know, St. Vicious having the easy steal with his smite. But uh, you're right, CLG was low. But at the same time, this is giving free farm to Hotshot, mm -hmm. allowing him to push the tower with actually no consequence at all. That's, de that's definitely not good for VA at all. The expectation is when you five-man group for Dragon, you can kill it enough before they can respawn, and if they do, you can turn on them and kill them. However, neither happens, so um, Sion definitely lost about two, two and a half ways up top, and that's going to further extend the lead Hotshot has over him. So for a lane that he should be able to win or break even in, he's definitely not going to be able to do that anymore. So Vayne, definitely one of the strongest duelists in the game. She has so much burst potential. Uh, you know, Kog'Maw definitely has the range advantage, but once Doublelift comes into range, do you think they need to be concerned at all? Or is the fact that they have the Soraka, have the Karthus backup, is that just too much for Doublelift to you know, pursue any aggression? I feel like in a normal 5v5 fight, she's going to have to come in late. Because if she comes in too early, she's going to be able to get bursted down too early. Um, if she's gonna engage, she has to time Sion's stun until she goes in. Uh, not until Sion has blown his stun and or shield uh, is she gonna be able to get in. So it's just gonna all it's all gonna come down to timing in a five v five fight. Given that the team fight is even, if it's really face roll, then she can just go in and do whatever she wants. And so we do actually see St. Vicious coming in there, pinking that dragon. So we'll see whether or not CLG pursues it. They do have a lot of damage with Shivana and with uh, Vayne. Actually, St. Vicious just going to start it on his own. They are not aware of this currently, but I think Takashi kind of thinking it a little bit. Mundo stealing those rates in oh, the meantime. We have the teleport bad. in from Scion. Trieskimo going to chase him down. Going to come right in behind St. Vicious. Afro taking him down very quickly. There's the kill. And then the stun on the Chouster. Able to pick up that kill as well. And then Mundo chasing off Rise mid a little bit. But here we go. V8 able to take this dragon. And you know, with that dragon, considering they are pushing into that late game comp, um, it's that, gonna help is it, at, at what point do you think CLG really needs to kind of make a strong move and you know, take advantage of this game? They actually have good control of it until that move. I felt like Scion played that really, really well. If you look at the ward position, right, the common place that you would drop a pink ward to 
uh, D ward before you dragon is just slightly at that uh, pit, either a little bit out or actually uh, where you actually walk in. So you can get ward inside the pit and outside the pit. And so the, the ward that they placed, D8 placed, was actually outside of the range of the counter ward uh, behind. So if someone starts dragon, you can see an early warning and actually teleport it in. They actually don't have a place to back it into because Sion's going to have a stun people can close in, into Shivana. As the game progresses, assuming CLG gets a good engage that they want, uh, they don't really have the best initiation on really either team. We do have the stun from Sion, but uh, Mundo actually unstoppable getting pretty low there for the red, but he will have that for those ganks. But um, I don't know, do you think that Karthus's wall against this heavy melee team, this, this really short range team, is that just going to be too much for CLG to handle? Or how do they negotiate around the wall of pain? I feel like if the game is even at the 25, 30 minute mark, uh, CLG is going to have a very, very hard time. And if they're going to make something happen, it's going to be from a pick. Uh, Rise is going to have to land a really, really good snare and pick someone off. Otherwise, if it's going to be a standoff, uh, BA is definitely going to have the advantage. And looking at the farm, we do see that Hotshot has a slight advantage, 40 CS ahead of Trieskimo because he has been kind of roaming. I'll call that a slight one, but uh, I don't know. That definitely getting to that point where he's going to be extremely tanky, we'll see how CLG kind of pressures that. And uh, the other lane's pretty even, actually. We have Cog with a slight advantage over uh, Double Lift, and then Karthus as well, farming extremely well against Big Fat Mid. Um, so I, I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see how CLG kind of pursues this advantage. We do see Muffin Cutie warding up in this tri brush here, kind of concerned about the uh, St. Vicious jump over the wall there, but um, I guess we'll have to see. What, so coming into um, you know, this kind of mid eight game area, V8 definitely doing right, well right now. What, what are going to be their goals to kind of continue the pressure in their advantage? Um, or do they primarily just kind of want to sit back, farm, allow the late game to progress for them? What I feel VA wants to do at this point is just farm. They, they don't want to give up any advantage and just extend that gold lead. And even if they don't extend it, as long as they maintain it and it gets into late game, they're going to be able to team fight more properly. Than so there is actually the slow from Hotshot. They are tower diving, and there's the exhaust ending the night. He's going to go down very quickly. Karthus does have the ult, but it just doesn't have enough damage at this point.